And now, prepare yourself for the final battle. Listeners everywhere, welcome to The Movie Show with Joel and Ryan, the weekly fix for your screen addiction and a trusted source for discussion of all things film and television. Please keep in mind that for the purposes of this podcast, Joel and Ryan are not acting as journalists, but rather fellow moving picture enthusiasts. All of their opinions should be taken as such. Also, please be warned that while Joel and Ryan may seem like petulant children, they are, in fact, adults who may occasionally use adult language. While they promise to bleep out all the worst words, it's a good bet you will still understand what they were saying. And now, with no further ado, here's Joel and Ryan. Hey guys, I'm I'm not an alien. I don't. It's me. It's me, you guys. It's me. Hey, you, do you recognize me now? Here, I'll do this. Do you, is that good? Do you recognize me now? Yeah. All right. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What's up, gang? Where's Julie? Um. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Movie Show with Joel and Ryan. It's always great to start out an audio podcast with a visual joke. Uh, that's <laughs> that's the kind of production Those of you value. only listening to this in your headphones yep. are wondering what you had no idea i highly recommend uh going over to our youtube page the movie show the youtube ryan, movie show with joel and ryan page on the youtube and uh and yeah and you can see um mike donovan hosting this podcast i i'm i gotta admit i'm kind of loving my i love this mike donovan wig um all right hey everybody welcome to movie show with joel and ryan i am joel and i'm ryan and i'm michael yay michael is back once go. again <laughs> joining us from sunny los angeles our good friend michael um all right gang we are um on night two of the final battle um and we are on episode the penultimate episode yeah the penultimate the- episode this is also the penultimate episode of this podcast's extensive quite extensive deep dive into uh the v uh the v original miniseries and v the final battle which uh if you haven't guessed by now the three of us kind of love we do we kind of yeah, love it. We haven't. The jury's still out, and it's not official. But so far on the V deep dives, I've been hearing good things. Mm, that's good. Some good responses coming. Excellent. Back. Yep. Mm. Um, I gotta people, admit, people don't think we've gone too far. They think this is, of course, we're t- we're only a little more yeah. than halfway through. Nevertheless, yeah. they think this is pretty <laughs> much think- the sweet spot as far as length of V coverage. Yeah. yeah. If you think we haven't gone too far? Don't worry. There's... We we have two more episodes to absolutely uh, destroy any goodwill that we have earned. So that's true. Um, all right. So okay. Sadly, so... we all sort of like the show less and less as it goes on, which <laughs> is going to be difficult. But yeah. there's still a lot of really cool things and a lot there's... of really cool concepts to talk about. So. And yeah. it's and and yes, we don't like the show. Air quote fingers. We don't necessarily like the show, but, but the we show love it. is we love it because it is there. It just gets increasingly bonkers too. We do love it like family. It's true. Yeah. Um. So all right. So before we uh, and jump, you can't in... choose your family. No, you cannot sleep with aliens, but this Ugh, don't get started on that Ms. ship Maxwell. has sailed, unfortunately. Correct. You know, I, I just want to I just want to point out if we really, really wanted to give people what they want, we should have done five episodes of the psychology of Robin Maxwell. That's what well, that's, people want. Isn't that what we've sort of been doing? I, I guess, of, but it's not been dedicated. Been mm. Well, before we get into the deep dive and we play the deep dive theme, we did skip uh polly's finest moment last week that was my fault um oh. in this mini in the second mini series yeah the when she's in the lab with the lizards and yep. robin <laughs> comes in there for, for running some chore for julie and <sighs> her little sister sitting there going 
they're lizards. They're lizards. And Robin's like, that's not true. And she's like, yeah, they're gross, creepy, slimy lizards. lizards. Give it a kiss. Come on. And of course, this is actually pretty well done. And not that yeah. just because Vivica's great, because she's always can be counted on to deliver this sort of thing. But Robin's reaction to it is real and emotional and awful. Like she's playing a totally different scene than her sister. And when Robert comes running in, <laughs> <laughs> when they pass in the hall he gives he gives Polly that look and Polly's like what I didn't yeah. do anything yeah I know <laughs> well, so because they all know everyone knows by this point they've yeah. already we've already had the abortion talk right no, no, so. no this happens before that's why I'm going back to it oh. because it it's well yeah because she doesn't yeah she, she doesn't believe Willie. it and then she sees Willie yeah yeah we, yeah, we, okay. it, we it's all part of up. her awakening that they really are lizards um <laughs> but it's a great scene. And the look on Michael Durrell's face when Polly says, I didn't do anything, is it's it's fantastic parenting one-on-one look. It's this, it's hard to explain. They just mm. have to watch it. He gives her this look like, I know that you're lying and we're not going to talk about it now, <laughs> but is, we'll yeah. deal with this later. Even though we, we will, we will circle on back. But it's kind of like, who mm. I'm, you know, I'm your father, right? I know exactly you did something. I don't know what it is, but oh, it's awesome. God, it's and, so and Polly's lie of, I didn't do anything is vehement. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's not a, I don't want to get in trouble. It's, it's, I didn't do anything. And don't you, you, you know, like I'm, and I'll fight to the death to prove it, even though we know that clearly she just did something just seconds ago. So it's a little glimpse into Polly's sort of, commitment to her own reality which is very fun in and of itself because it. sadly we don't get a lot of poly resistance fighter and be the final nope. battle no nope. and the but she and, is at least again, still around to taunt her sister yeah and i feel is. bad that we skipped that for that reason, yeah so. there's a there's a moment in the final episode that it would have been great to get polly's take on um but we'll get to that we'll get to uh, that oh i know actually it is yeah it's in, in this, episode three yeah in episode yeah yeah um all right so uh all right before we get into um uh the night two of the final battle let's take a look back at night one however i wasn't able to find a recap but i did find a preview of the first night so we're going to listen to a recap in preview form everyone have their tenses correct excellent good let's roll the saga continues as the the final battle begins Prepare yourself for the last war mankind may ever fight. Time is running out for those who know the truth. They must expose the visitor's secret enterprise. But the resistance force is surrounded by alien armies, and more are on their way. For Donovan and Julie, these may be their final days together, and the final days of man on Earth. And Donovan must face the aliens to free his son from the mothership, and Diana is waiting for him to try. A war where the prize is our planet, Pitting mother against son, neighbor I'm warning you. against neighbor, and allies against each other. No! A war where one baby's birth is the most anxiously awaited moment in history. A war where everything you can imagine happens. Wow. That's... There, for as long and drawn out as that was, there is precious little actual information. <laughs> And a couple okay. things. Couple Unfortunately, little things. it's because it was a preview. They didn't want to give away everything. Yeah, but it's I just needed. it's just hype. Like he's not telling us what just happened. Or <laughs> all I wanted to know as a kid, yeah. or all I wanted was give me the baby. I don't care about anything else as a kid. Yeah. I want the the lizard baby. That's well, your luck because the people who directed and produced this episode didn't care about anything else other than that either so <laughs> we're in, true. you're in good hands yay <laughs> all right here we go gang let us jump into uh, a deep dive of night two part two of v the final battle into it now and we start out this episode with a brand new character two brand new characters 
that really kind of changed the whole series. Uh, changed the I whole movie series. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, it is pretty, pretty tremendous. We get to meet. Uh, we get to meet Chris Farber, um, who uh, I'm. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm doing the build up. So Chris Farber is the assistant. Is no, associate. The associate. How, thank you. How about associate. how they are introduced in the story? Yeah, that's true. Just... We, so we get we we open on our um, we open on our resistance headquarters, and there's this dude. This and out shifty... on Century Watch are Brad and, uh, uh, and Elias. Uh, no, no, it's it's, it's this time it's the Keystone Sancho. Cops version of yep. the Resistance Force. It's it's Brad and Sancho. Yep. Sancho. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And, and they're um, bickering about something, and 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 here's uh, and here's a shifty and there's some looking unknown character. dark figure taking photos, taking and photos, just looking at our head, our mm. hideout through a telephoto lens, and Going, they're they all come bottled up behind him, and there. yeah, Brad says some badass ex cop sort of thing to him, and okay. Needless and, to say, this dark figure is not impressed <laughs> with the tough talk. Yep, yeah, and uh, and with uh, and, he and then, says in the thickest Canadian accent you will ever hear in <laughs> any <laughs> media whatsoever. <laughs> move the X M sixteen, or I'll make you eat it. And, um, and he so, says this. He recognizes what the gun is by having it tap him l- gently on the shoulder. <laughs> yep. So yeah. this is a guy who knows his weapons, right? We're learning a lot. Just yep, and, and just when and just when our uh, intrepid uh, heroes, our Sentry Watch, think they have they have this guy, uh, you know, dead to rights, saying, "Okay, here we go. We're gonna take care of you." Out steps uh, a, 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 a Chris uh, Farber. Chris, Chris Faber, Faber yeah. later renamed as Farber because the actor who constantly introduces him couldn't get the name right. <laughs> <laughs> but, so they had um, to officially change it rather than go back and dub all that or reshoot any uh, of it. Yep, a fan, uh, and and he's got <laughs> and and he has a great intro, like you know, pops out camo jacket or you know green army fatigue yeah. jacket, got a toothpick in his mouth, and he says, "You better step back a couple and feet in a couple and seconds." Uzi, yeah. Which, yeah. This is the first movie I remember seeing the Uzi and this moment, granted, they've been around for a little while, but this moment is, is this is the next few minutes of the show are Uzi centric moments. (laughs) And I truly, and, and it's the first time I was like, look at that little weird thing that he's carrying that like, is like a machine gun, but it's like this tiny thing. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'd never seen that. I truly had never seen that before this episode. So yeah, Chris Farber, we'll call him by his official name now. His intro His name. canonical name, even if it was not what the authors intended. Um, yeah, he cocks the Uzi and, and, and our heroes are foiled. And there's you this great step moment, back. You great step moment back between a Sandy feet. Simpson and Raphael Campos where yeah. they're being led into the hideout and they're, I don't know. They're just making stuff up, but Campos in particular is like, "I told you, you don't have to." And they're just like arguing with each other because yeah. they've been captured and are sort of humiliated. You're not letting me get out my Chris Farber intro line, which I love oh. it so much. Like, Please do. Step- it's as good as the other one. You better step back a couple feet, or you're gonna be dancing. You're oh shoot, I screwed oh! it up. Oh! You better step back a couple feet, or else you're gonna be cloud dancing. I love it cloud dancing it's um, great right. and it's a much easy uh it's a that actor it's a much easier accent to do than the canadian yep. one but i'll i'll give it i'll Let's... give a few lines my best shot as we go um so we had uh so so they say well, i want to talk to your boss uh this mysterious figure this mysterious figure and his buddy um haul uh uh brad and, and sancho down into the into the hideout um where uh where suddenly our, our our leader because as we know julie was captured at the end of part one so She's, now everyone our, is our heroes to have had a big time victory with this expose that they did on on uh, but at a big live price. television yeah but they at a great expense thank mm-hmm. you michael it's at what cost michael what, what cost, cost is it what, what is cost? What do we need to yeah the cost of their intrepid leader, head scientist, mm-hmm. you know, kind of eye candy. Let's be honest. Yep, she's a, she's a looker for sure, and uh, she's just sort of multi-skilled, um, level-headed mm-hmm. leader of the resistance. It's a it's a huge deal not to have. She's her. A, she's a hyphenate. She's yep. a total hyphenate. Yeah, she has multiple uh, multiple skills. Dude, she's a total hyphenate. And and instead of 
where's Brian? Now we have a whole episode of where's Julie? I want Julie. Yeah. <laughs> Julie has taken over. Um, but Mike Go is on. A- Go on. <laughs> Uh, Mike is uh, now leader and he's like, hey, what is going on here? And, and Sancho's like, damn, they're what happened here. And then we're like, and they appear oh, out of the shadows. They Ham appear Tyler out of the shadows. And Chris Farber. Ham Tyler, Chris Farber. And we get a little. How are you doing, Gooder? <laughs> That's short for do gooder. It's a little nickname he's got for me. Oh, we've met before. Laos, El Salvador, you name it. He blows it up, I cover it with the camera. And the folks back home hate him for it. I want you to meet Ham Tyler, master of covert operations, communications, and bad relations. This is Chris Farber, my associate. You people are doomed. <laughs> the first of 25 <laughs> times he says that. Chris Farber, uh, my associate, and you people are doomed. This and is you, and you people are doomed. I I, I want to go back to what Ryan said. It's like we get a lot of information about just him getting the poke of the gun. Mm-hmm. But I think that this is one of the most powerful introductions just in the way that, I mean, it's all on Ironside. It's all oh. on him. And it's like the, the fact that his name is, is how you doing gooder. It's like, there's yeah, an automatic gooder. history. We get it right away. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, Ironside is, he's an effing gem. I yeah, mean, he he's is. so oh, perfect he's for this. So and good. dare I say, and he's been great in however many tons of things, but the, uh, Ham Tyler really is his signature role. I mean, it's hard to imagine a, a better character for his sort of, this sort of like darkly charismatic. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's it's just kind well, of perfect for his persona. It's really, yeah, really fun. And, How and, you doing? His, Good and his commitment, his commitment to it, um, you know, the dude... But you know, everything's never, so low key oh. compared to the all the. He has one quotable like, like, um, money line after another, and they're all just no. That's a waste of good luggage. It's just all, yeah. and yeah. and that's why it's so awesome because he doesn't he doesn't punch every swear word like it's he gets to say a bad word. Mm-hmm. He just says the stuff. He's like never a guy, in a hurry. Like it just came to his mind and it yeah. Just, He's never in a hurry. You almost never see him run. And if he runs, it's kind of more of a jaunt or a, tri- a, a trot. <laughs> a trot. Yeah. A lively trot. A lively right. trot. But, but even the, the most we get like, out of man. him in this upcoming action sequence oh. is a uh, sigh. He, he does that before yep. he goes back to work at one point. It's, it's, so Cam Tyler but it's, is, but the really, the it's really good. It's really, it's great repartee between him and, and Farber uh, as well. Like they, it's, Yep. I think what's one of the benefit about it is he's my associate, but you also, I guess, between the two actors, because you don't get any exposition. So it's just it's just their chemistry. And you buy that these guys have been out working together for decades. Like they, yes. it's, they yeah, have the same that. Eric, actor again, Mike Joel, who plays Chris. Mickey Jones. Mickey Jones. Yeah, Mickey Jones is a very, you guys maybe don't know him from this because you know him more from his movie stuff, but he's a very famous drummer he was a drummer for the first edition which was uh kenny rogers first band um just checked in to see what condition my condition was in was their big hit and kim Carnes was in that band and they were all still friends and he still plays drums occasionally he, here no there. he well he died he, he's dead well he's gone but he, <laughs> he 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 was an actor from about this point on until and he yeah. was a very popular actor on 80s tv and 90s tv he was a regular on home improvement and all kinds of other things yeah. um and he shows up with michael ironside from this point in, and even if they don't share screen time together they keep showing up in the same movies over and over and over again um they it, to your point, Michael, they have an extremely lived-in relationship on screen in mm-hmm. the final battle, which is wonderful. It's it is. One, it was really wonderful. But they met for the first time on this project. Mm. As a matter of fact, they met just before these scenes that we're talking about were shot. They met just the day before because Ironside was hard to fathom, but he was a very late addition to this cast. Um, and if it makes you feel better that throughout the years from this point on they remained best friends ironside is was was mickey's daughter's godfather wow and and they were you know they i saw an interview with ironside talking about v in his backyard and it was this barbecue sort of backyard thing and he's sitting at like this 
you know, picnic table or whatever, doing this interview with some kid and Mickey Jones and his family are literally <laughs> they're back there. Yeah. They're there that day because they were just there because they're, yeah, they buds. were be yeah. literally best buds after this, which I love it. Is, that that I mean, does like, make me happy. That's um, the fantasy, right? That everybody loves everybody and that, you know. Well, here's what I'd say. Of course, not they always have, true in Hollywood, but it really was in this case. They have the same relationship that Donovan and Tony have yes. in the first one. They, the, a, you know, a, that, flip, a darker flip side a darker of the coin flip side is of that it. they it's, really are mercenaries. Yeah, it's, you know, the two, Donovan and Tony, you know, a, a, a Mark Singer and um, oh, Evan Kim. Evan Kim. Um, you know, yeah, from the very, very beginning uh, in that first, in that first document, or in that first documentary. Oh, this is real? Close. They were doing it's it. It's real. Uh, this is real. Yeah. Uh, no, the, uh, <laughs> don't you remember, don't you remember, news, Michael? News when the, gathering event. Uh, yeah, but no, they, uh, but yeah, they have that same sort of lived in when they're, you know, yeah. driving through El Salvador trying to escape, uh, you know, escape the helicopter and everything. It's that same lived in. It's just, it's. And that's you know that's a credit to those act to those two actors putting making that feel very real very lived in we get that absolutely with yeah. uh, with Farber but and Ham. isn't it isn't it interesting though that because um, people meet on these sets randomly and there's no connection and so it it doesn't benefit but it's I it's it's always curious to me what is it that makes that click because yeah if these two just met and it's probably the same for Singer and and Evan Kim. They yep. just met and like suddenly they have to be thrown in together. And I guess it's it's the same for like a love scene. You want there to be chemistry, but it's it's I interesting to be how it doesn't work all the time. To post it on our wall after the show, but I can't find it. I think it's been taken down. But there's this wonderful moment where Michael's sitting there doing the interview with this guy and his daughter comes running up and jumps on him. And she starts going, what are you doing? You know, like she just doesn't care that she's interrupting everything like a kid that age. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I'm doing an interview with this guy about a project that daddy did a long time ago. And he's like, she's like, well, what was it? He goes, well, he starts, she starts doing the interview. It's really, really funny. And he's like, well, it was called V and it had all this stuff in it. And it was where I met your uncle Mickey. And, and, uh, and she's like, oh, well, okay. And then she gets bored with it and kind of runs away. And then he goes back to the interview. I love it. Yeah. I wish you could see it. Cause Ironside is a, I don't know. I, he's partly what you see on screen, but he's partly this sort of sensitive artist as well, which yeah. you really never see as part of his characterizations. I think the closest he came to seeing him as that kind of guy was his that weird, uh, that weird like Doctor of the World character that he played on ER for a while. Oh yeah, when William yeah, H Macy right. was off doing something else. Um, that guy was this weird, interesting, been everywhere, done everything guy with this very strange sort of intimate and wise old sage side and we just never usually he's a um, usually yeah, iron side when he's well cast he's cast as a bad guy here he's cast as a really really bad good guy which is a which is great it's even better right it's like yeah. a he, he takes on like a a bad professional wrestler that you like anyway like a roddy piper sort of persona in this thing yeah and he he thank God he arrives at just the right time. He, yep. th this thing needs this character desperately yeah. right now. Yeah, it's, and he it's, basically it's, says to get back to the plot. Now that we're yeah, done. so what happens is that you know he's like, yeah, it, it, you're. This is a tomb. You guys are, it, but he yeah. he reveals that look. They're not the only resistance out there. This resistance is a worldwide. You're part of a global network yeah. now. You take your orders from me. And of course, they're all very resistant to this idea. But this is sort of good well, they news. are the resistance, Ryan. This is sort of yeah. good news for for our heroes. Yeah, they need they're, to be hooked yeah. up with a global network, and here yep. they are. They're they're stunt. You pulled off a nice stunt. Um, yes. like he's not impressed with their huge. Mm -hmm. He he acknowledges that it was awesome, and yet he still just sort of talks it down. Like you guys. Yeah, you did that. You lucky, yeah, you showed you them whatever. for what they are, and the whole mm -hmm. world knows now. But that's not that big a deal. You guys are resistance with a little R. I and come. And I am resistance, <laughs> big R. But and that's, Donovan's that's... got this great line, which yeah. is like, "Hey, at least we did something. The visitors yeah. know we're here." And he, he's got this great, which brings me to my next point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's so but good. it's what and I love about. He doesn't even get to finish that thought yeah. before Elias and everybody come running in. They're like, "They're here." There's visitors coming. We yeah, just yeah the, the blah, priest, blah, blah. yeah, priest guy, whatever. Uh, right, right, right. Um, but what I love about Ham's character is that, and we'll get to this, but the the fact that he 
has this bravado and this know-it-allism, but he also recognizes when he's wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's such an interesting layer to a character like this. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, he's still it's is I don't a, know that he's he still a team player. He's wrong so much now, as that when he loses the argument, he he's he goes along for the greater good. We see him do that two or three times mm -hmm. during this. I don't think he ever truly believes he's wrong. Here's, I think here's, he's he's a he's a smart enough guy to see both sides, even okay. though he yeah, doesn't it, yeah. recognize it. Until here's what I got to say: as, when I was re, when re, in rewatching this, uh, the same thing. It's an awesome thing about the character. I agree with you, Mike. Um, I, I I I kept watching this, and um, I I kept feeling like, is there actually a worldwide resistance, or is this <laughs> yeah. just some, or is he just like, is it a power a play? Bit, it's kind of yeah. He's like, I actually I know what I'm doing, but you know I have all this experience. I'm going to take these guys over and I need to, you know, because like we don't ever see the world. Yes, no, but we do see I mean, all the evidence of it. Yeah, I mean, eventually. So what you're you saying know, while cute is completely inaccurate. So don't let the. Not no, at but this I, point, I agree with Joel. It's like at, at this, this point, point, it feels like it could be a tool. Point, not at this feels, point. That's true. At, fe at this point, we don't like, really know. It feels like he's just come in and he's like, well, I'm part of worldwide resistance. <laughs> yeah. You guys are nice and cute and everything. But let me tell you yeah. what it's really going on. Sure. And you're just like, what is, what? Because it's not like he shows up with a bunch of people. That's it's right. just him and his associate. Chris in, a, Farmer. in a in a whatever a, a, a what do you call it? You know, one of those camper trucks. Yeah, Winnebago. with the W on the side. Yeah, what Winnebago. Is the w Winnebago. 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 Thank you. They're traveling mm -hmm. the world in a Winnebago, just looking for a resistance group to join up with and take charge <laughs> of. Yeah. Um, well, I, um, so I, I, I mean, I'm just saying, if through that lens, the, it, it just sort of out of like, what is. What is this guy? Well, yeah, yeah, at the point as an audience, you're not the wiser, you know. So it does seem like you could you could look at it as a a power play, mm -hmm. you know. Well, but it isn't. So it isn't. But I think that's an interesting time on that well, idea. Is he all gets. I, I was. It isn't that. Okay, it, he well, is he, part of a worldwide network. He does have connections everywhere. It is proven just shortly here. It's not. That's just a thing. But. Uh, it, the point is our heroes aren't trusting of him and they have no reason to be. Uh, that part I agree with. They're, it totally ruffles their feathers. And at a time where their true moral leader isn't here to sort of stand up to him. Yeah. If anything, Donovan gives him credence. He says, yeah, this guy's the real deal. He blows stuff up. I mean, this mm -hmm. is the sort of thing he would be involved in. And then the next action sequence where he's like, get your people out of here. And I alone with an Uzi with special bullets is, are going to take out this entire invading force that's coming into this hideout yep. single-handedly. We see Dick Miller again. He's the guy who sold our heroes out in their hideout. Damn and uh, yeah, we see Captain Brian and, and Visitor Captain. They're in charge of this sort of raid on the hideout. And they do get everybody out the back way. Great. Awesome. And he mows them down, man. He does two rounds through the thing in a circle and just takes everybody who's coming in out. And then when the coast is clear and everybody's free, Farber hits the lever and blows the thing up. Yeah. And you see all the outfits with the little scales showing through their It's a pretty solid action sequence, it's, actually. It's like really it's, good. it's well done. As far as shootouts go, it has a very clear sense of geography, which is important. Yeah. You don't ever feel confused by it. Yeah, yeah. And it's... It believably shows how one guy doing everything right could could stand up to these guys yeah. for at least for a limited amount of time. Well, it's it's this is something that struck me, and this is just me being a, a nerd. But I was watching this sequence, and I was engaged, of course, with what was going on. But I'm also in my head thinking about how much of an ordeal and time was taken to get the scientific equipment down from the mountain in the original series, and now mm -hmm. they are literally running away. So I'm like, what about all this stuff? I mean, that yeah. was my concern in my head. I'm like, I don't think they're good well, all that. the original series made a big deal about the stuff. Of course, Final Battle doesn't want you thinking about that kind of thing. There's no way they could have got that stuff out. Of the only way to, dis to make an excuse for how they suddenly got stuff back was that Tyler really is hooked in. He's hooked into the black market in LA. He knows where all these all, all these alternate hideouts we talked about last episode. He knows what he keeps saying, I know a place, I know a place. Like he just- I'll, I'll buy that, Ryan Harris. I'll and then buy they show that. up someplace else. So I believe 
they got they their microscopes and crap yeah. back to right. his channels. Well, quick little side thing. I did meet Ironside at a festival several years ago. I mean, it was very brief, but I mean, in my head, like you said, it's like this guy has been in everything for the past 40 years. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could think of, I'm like, I mean, I got his autograph because I'm a nerd, but I'm mm -hmm. like, this is Ham Tyler. This wasn't even Ironside. I'm like, oh, it's Ham Tyler. Ham Tyler he was very too. gracious, but he had a cold, so he wasn't really chatty. That's no. too bad. There you go. Um, real quick, he was so, at the thing, so one would hope he would at least be gracious. Yeah, yeah. But, no, yeah. Um, we do. It is important to note that um, you know, even though Ham was about to tell them that, look, you guys are, you know, you guys are about to be invaded, uh, the call comes actually from Ruby, who That's right. uh, is, uh, is who sees the the assault team amassing at the yeah. It's important. At the headquarters, yeah. uh, Ruby. So Ruby, uh, you know, who is. Uh, posing um using her theatrical skills uh to pose as a uh, a cleaning lady at the headquarters is able to and it's a out. transformation of I mean, camilla ashland who plays ruby like ruby in real life and ruby under disguise really do look quite a bit different and yet they are kind of the same person it's yeah it's actually really well done obviously the makeup team on both of these projects were top notch and so that i'm sure that helps a lot but uh you know, she does the whole thing. She mm -hmm. does false teeth and she wears a wig that looks fairly believable on her. She changes her walk. Ruby in another life was an actor and yep. Really does Don't go nice. There yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really does nice work here. Um a, B, 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 B. saves uh, everybody yeah, so, although uh, tyler they, was already there to save everybody when yeah. the word came down they uh they do um so they do get out they relocate to an old um movie ranch an old uh yeah so they're, they're it's like an old western town it's actually yeah, still there yeah. it's fairly famous mm -hmm. um and, yeah and used in a, a whole bunch of different things um, all kinds of stuff yep yeah uh so that's so we know that that's that's where not they are. so much where they make movies much anymore because the buildings in this place have been used in so many stupid things mm -hmm. but like back in the day back in the star trek day and stuff like that they used to shoot stuff on this old western town yeah it wasn't and, like gun uh, smoke or something or yeah exactly and mm -hmm. and and now you know and then when we were kids it was like three two one contact would go there for the day or <laughs> you know what i mean like it was that kind of place a very mm -hmm. touristy movie place where they yeah. don't may actually make a lot of content anymore but still very cool and they there's this all the green room areas and sleeping areas are in this train on a train track in an old mm -hmm. passenger train and so that set has a very their meeting room is this old saloon and yet they all live in on this train it's very cool. I mean, it's yeah. a very cool locale. M Michael pointed out all these hideouts are really neat. They all have their own kind of personality. And mm -hmm. this one definitely is maybe the coolest, hard to say. Yep. And uh, yeah, and, and probably they would not have been able to get there were it not for him and the international resistance, the capital R resistance. And his associate. And his associate, Chris Farber. <laughs> And Chris Farber. Um, so, do you guys remember? Do you guys remember the real broadcast when John watch Mickey announced... Jones too? He beams a little with pride whenever he is introduced that way, which I kind of like. Interesting. Just a little. He doesn't make a big deal out of it, but he gets the. He, there's a little bit of, kind of yeah, that's me. Oh yeah, yeah. He's the kind of the ultimate sidekick in that way. So, so if you guys remember uh, at the uh, the real broadcast when John announces the cancer um, the cancer <laughs> thing, uh, the um, it was introduced by um, by Eleanor. Mm. Eleanor uh. stepped stepped up because we um, you know R.I.P. Um, Christine Walsh uh, Wade Walsh. Yeah, you're right. Ugh. Um, and so uh, so Eleanor's taking over. So this is where uh, so we get um, Stephen going. Well, you know. Christine's, you know, dead, and uh, we need a new spokesperson. And I, I think that, uh, oh. yeah, and we have we have old lady getting, you know, ooh, I we think you would fit the, the bill very nicely. I haven't so felt, well, if you I haven't think felt so. this way. Oh, if you only if you think and so. The great Stephen and, line in this exchange is, "It's already been decided." Like yeah. it's like we weren't really asking you. You're going to be doing this now. Yeah. I'm flattering you. You know, it's like. He kind of has it both ways in the mm -hmm. scene, which I it's a dig. great moment, though. I liked watching um, Jane Badler saying it because she didn't have any I don't think any lines in this, maybe a couple, whatever. But yeah, just I, watching I her, any, I think you're, yep. watching her 
just watch Steven schmooze. It's a really, it's a really fun. Well, now it's Steven's sellout human that gets to do all this stuff. Whereas, whereas, you know, Diana's has completely failed. I yeah, mean, mm-hmm. totally. So it's they they take this too far as we go, and we're about to be introduced to another new character that takes it even too far. And the TV series was even worse. It was all about Diana feeling threatened and stuff. And as many of those moments that are fun during this, she's you know, they only work because she's so confident and powerful in her other scenes. When you really just have her in fighting with her own people all the time, it it gets silly and old and starts to feel stupid and starts to diminish her, frankly. This, we're not there yet. Her and Steven's little tug and pull is uh, fantastic and always Mm -hmm. has been. Because Steven's failure during this section of the story is, catastrophic and he seems to just <laughs> slither through it without really any consequences yeah. because he's such a smooth operator you know like well, that's he's something like, yeah well we'll find out that you know even though he's clearly a failure like you said this next new character is going to be like how can you it because of personal issues right. yeah, it's like you can look i at don't know if like, we're there yet but no we just, but yeah since we're talking about this we'll just do this. The, a new mothership slides in alongside the other LA one, containing the uh, person who's in charge of the military operations for the planet, not just Los Angeles. Her, her she shares the same rank as Diana because Diana is in charge of the scientific operations right. for the planet. Um, but their rivals clearly. Her name's Pamela. She's played by the great Sarah Douglas, yep. who you guys all know as Ursa in the Superman, Superman. movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she's been in tons of stuff of this type, and as always, can be counted on. She has well, a very it doesn't, it doesn't hurt that she's got that fantastic accent. I mean, it's she, just, she's got a very posh British accent yeah, that just so makes you kind of hate her. Yeah, yeah, and she knows it. I think Sarah's very, as an actor, gets it. She, I think, she really understands that. If I dial that up just a little, like it's yeah. still me and my voice, and yet it's really and she actually is um pamela's actually a really good um pamela could be great if she could have been carried over into the series she would have been much better than who she she sort of was by something else but yeah yeah yeah. but you know it it it's not that she's not cool it's that it's no but it's it's a nice with diana the head butting Mm -hmm. i enjoy you know it it is it's fun while it lasts but it's a little late for a character of this type to be Mm -hmm. coming in here and everything to do with her feels a little rushed i have to say all right so let's get to let's get to where pamela uh, uh arrives um what what gets us there is um so we've moved to the new um we moved to the new uh hideout and the new headquarters uh, eleanor is now going to be the spokesperson um and everything boy everything is coming up eleanor um but it, then also at the end of uh at the at the, the cliffhanger the cliffhanger at the end of night one was julie in yep. her uh in Ooh, in man. her uh the 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 conversion chamber lasers going everywhere um funky noises yeah. rock and, and roll the, conversion the, chamber yeah, i call rock it rock and roll yep and so julie is so we uh we head back to yet another Lots of smoke and and disco dj lighting yep. and mm-hmm. um so julie is uh yep so she's going through a conversion and and she's a tough cookie as we know that julie she's tough but you know these uh we get a little taste of what the conversion is like and it's basically preying on your biggest your deepest darkest fears so that eventually diana can say no look i'll make it all better props oh, to off camera visitor technician too who keeps telling diana you pushed too far yep, you damn going, her. she's going to die blah 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 like i don't we, mm-hmm. we, i'm sure we see his face but mostly we hear these excited utterances from him off screen while we're watching our main hero and our main bad guy go through this little mental mind game together Mm. i you know despite the the datedness of some of the effects i this last viewing i found this whole sequence terrifying it's smoky and scroby and disorienting right and I mean, but you know what it sells it yeah, this sure. this first one is very scary yes faye grant sells the hell out of it yeah. i mean she is delivering on all cylinders and it's you know and i think what's despite what we see in her visions it's kind of cheesy but it all still worked for me like i i found the whole thing and certainly you know diana reaching out i can make it go away julie this is 
terrifying. It's it not torture is. in that way that it's an interrogation. It really is. I'm going to put you through this experience and I'm going to become the only one who can save you from it. Oh, that's, God. that's the creepiness you know that really, really works. This I moment, I mean, we'll get to it, but it, it full, comes full circle and it's brilliant. And, and we don't see it for a long time, you know? So, but I, I, I was most impressed by, by Faye Grant, like she's just her, you know, her convulsions, her seeing things that aren't oh, there. Man, it's, her, even just now, when she's it gives standing me in that empty chamber, reacting to stuff that we can't even see, yeah. it, it's really, really powerful. I agree. I also really, like really, really outstanding. Yeah, I did also like that they had a, they clearly just had a button that was pre-programmed with a creepy voice going Jolie. That scared the hell out of me. Oh no, it did. But I was also oh, like, oh my god, well planned out, well planned out, Diana. Somehow they have the technology to to find that she had a child, creepy childhood experience, but th that had something to do with a big empty space that she was abandoned and or mm -hmm. left alone in, and they, and that's that is a creepy idea, and they play that visually. <laughs> Just really talking well. about that is freaking me out. This whole scene <laughs> scares me to death. The Her peeling thing. back the walls and having visitor oh, skin man. behind the yeah, walls. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that that That's Julie sound effect. Julie. No, no. Unfortunately, the voice of Julie is a turns out to be a a regular sized iguana on a miniature uh, alien. I was I was okay set. with that, Ryan. I was Who okay. Even Who the puppet, it all worked. I'm like, I'm really? buying it. I'm buying it. Yes, yes. Because it, it makes sense. It makes sense moment. in her subconscious. If you look at what she's been studying, and they have lizards all over the lab, why wouldn't that somehow play into it? Uh, that I can, I, I, no, I don't have yeah. a problem with it. It's the it's anytime you put a a bunny on a miniature set or a lizard on a miniature set, you don't get a performance. You get this lizard sitting there going, "Yo, I'm a lizard in I, this intense moment." <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, you know what it is. I, I forgive all of that because of everything, the, the power of everything else. All the uh, other I, stuff is I like, forgive I'm, it. I'm it's care. fun. I mean, it's this yeah. old school technique. I don't think it, it, it works quite well, but it, it, I don't hate it either. Like I'm not, we have, we have to tease it. Joel and I thought it was pretty silly, but it's, yeah, but it, well, I like no, the, but believe but, me, Michael, but it is I, awesome. I mean, it is that... this part of this whole thing, which is, Better we give you crap about it, Michael, but I legitimately, uh, I, I love that you love these things. I right. love that you can forgive that stuff yeah. and, and go and, yeah. and have it not. I, that's one of the things I love about you, but I just can't. I wish I could. I know, but <laughs> I it's like, but it, it and go, not to nope. belabor the point, but it's the fact that Faye Grant is selling it so hardcore. Yeah. It's like, it's like, a, it's not, it's not, it's incidental. No. It doesn't Her matter. psychological damage is what we're invested in and that yeah. plays through. So it's and just, it's, and it is, it is a great, um, like you mentioned, I think about how it ended in last it episode. It is still mm -hmm. so it, obviously well, yes, a real but, lizard on a tiny miniature set. But you, but I also wanted to point out the revisit super many times of the Diana reflection. Mm -hmm. that, it's so that's so beautiful to look at. That's it's a great so good. Shot. Yeah. It's Although she has one of her worst deliveries in one of these moments. Damn her. No, I will break her, damn her. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's a I, really bad, I love Jane Badler, but that well, is not a good do, delivery. Yeah. Yeah. I think. think it's cool because I like it because I like that damn her with the visitor voice. Something about yeah. it is kind of but cool. But she doesn't sell it because she does it later and it still doesn't sell. It's, me it's melodrama. It's not a very yeah. well-written line and it, it, you know... Well, you could have just yes. said "damn her," and the actor would have done a little bit better with it than what. Be they careful, put on Diana. Her. There's your guy. Be careful, Diana. <laughs> level five is too far. Whoever that guy is, I God bless. Oh, but him. I actually like when they go the level a lot of up and the effects and... change. Mm -hmm. It it works. It's intense. When the when the dry ice gets sucked out of the room and the little spinny disco thing comes on, it's it's cool. I, I love mean, this it, scene. I love this yeah. scene. I've always loved this scene. I sold I love that it. kind of disco lighting for a living for about fourteen years, <laughs> so I know what all of those things Everything are. Everything they so, did. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't romanticize it, or but at the same time, it, it's all used to good effect. I mean, they're just it's very much in a Kenneth Johnson sort of way. It's you're making use of the tools you have to make this as elaborate and as cool and varied a sequence as you can. You don't just have lizard on a set. You don't just have, you got all this stuff combined and that all comes together to make the conversion process a very vivid 
very iconic sequence from this. We've been teased about the hands, yeah. you know, changing. We, we've had this from the very beginning of V. And so to see it, it, it doesn't yeah. quite live up to the hype behind it, but it almost does. And that, that's enough. I mean, it's, it would be hard to be perfect with the sequence. But that's, that's another fun thing about it, knowing that we've had all these clues and what actually went on in here and how did they make them change? And then right. to see the tactics they use you know, by exploiting childhood memories and fears, it's perverse. Yeah, it's it is. so My wrong. God. It is. And, and your captor, God. and your captor as the sort of mother figure who can help you. And oh, it's so wrong. This, all you right? have to do is is take my hand. Take it, my it hand, is, Julie. And it is really subversive. I'll say one more thing about it, because I, I know we can't spend too much time on it. But and it Julie, is that, when she finally gives in and everybody oh gives no. in to torture eventually, everybody it's that, does. It is that betrayal it's, and it's- It just hurts. Because she holds so out wrong. a long time, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what yeah, Diana's yeah. angry because yeah. Julie's a tough cookie, you know? What actually, mm -hmm. and the sad thing is what actually sends Julie over the edge is they mount a rescue for her where a visitor dressed up in Mike Donovan's skin breaks mm -hmm. into the chamber, shoots one of the guys and is about to save her before they get killed themselves. And her seeing Donovan die in front of her eyes trying to rescue her is, I mean, it's not, mm. that's not where the breakdown happens, but that's truly where I believe her, her hope and her inner strength sort oh, of yeah. goes away. Mm -hmm. That's what I think is so fascinating. This is, you know, we talk about final battle. There's a lot of cheesiness, but this is deep, deep nastiness. And I agree. it's really, it's hard. Like I, when we watched it a couple of weeks, I'm like, this is not pleasant, you know? And especially since we love Julie so much to see her, and again, and of course, because she's selling it so well. I'll shut up now. I love the sequence. End of story. There, fine. <laughs> what? We, I love. Yeah, I mean, it's it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's some ex, uh, to to me, there's some execution issues. But no, yeah. there's no doubt that uh, the the actors, uh, everybody is on board with with selling the crap out of this. Yeah, so Careful, we do. Diana. We get. We get. Um, yeah, unbeknownst, you know. So we're watching. We're watching poor Julie get converted, and then all of a sudden, there's Mike. And yeah. he's jumping in, smashing, boom! We are shooting, shooting some people. And kudos just as, to the visitor wardrobe department. <laughs> yeah, they clearly, they clearly they did like, their research. <laughs> they got it they down, went, man. Well, I, you you know they went. They're like they're like you know whoever that dude was. He was one more was button? like this one, and one more button. And and also these these pants seem awfully tight. I don't. And they're like just no, do it's, it. It's, you're going to be well, fine. Can you imagine the, 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 oh. the visitor walks in as Donovan and he's got like blousy pants? <laughs> it's a fifth pleats. column member and pleats. it's odd that it's yeah. Martin that actually is like, I think you better come see this and brings Diane into this room where oh. where she starts, she just has this oh. tantrum. One of her own people tried to kill me. She, it's awesome. Oh, it's so good. And mm -hmm. she starts just pulling his skin off of him. Yep. But this is in front and of, we get, and of we get, Stephen and Pamela, right? Yeah, so Pamela, yeah, is right. It? So this is all, this all, yeah, this all happens. Too, huh? Yeah, pa well, after, well, we get the shooting of Mike Donovan and then that goes to. And then we come back from commercial and, um, you know, we get, uh, that's when Pamela arrives. We have the arrival right. of Pamela. Oh, you know, look at this. Oh, you know, uh, and then, um, uh, uh, we get some nice, uh, catty, it's a total catty power dialogue. play. Yeah, power by, play. Obviously, oh, yeah. John is slightly behind it. He's the one that brought Pamela involved because yep, and that's because of his humiliation the other night. But Pamela, Pamela's Pamela gets just the a whole, subtler you know, version of Diana. I mean, they're yeah. peas in a pod. And you get you, you. This is where you get the great line about Pamela going. Well, I can see where the supreme leader. You know, I trust you with all this. Well, the supreme leader and I are very, very close. Oh, is that Lovers. why he sent you millions of miles away oh my or whatever? God, it's um, so good. Yeah, that's it's that great. But is dialogue. this? Am I jumping the gun? Is this the Pamela Stephen conversation? Conversation of we should really be nice to her and help her. We need to support her. We need. I'm like, yeah, I can't remember if this is exactly oh. where it is, but yeah, that's it's all. But part it's, of it. it's it's also all, worth noting yeah. that you know to check out the wound on Mike Don Mike Donovan, we do get some extended chest. Exposure. Even though he was shot in the back, we get the great uh, chest. Well, there. exit wound. Uh, that's well. That's how I. Uh, yeah, justify it's not it really too, how it but, works, but okay. Yeah, apparently that's how. <laughs> um, for eight-year-old kids, it was fine. For yeah, for eight-year-old Michael, yeah, extra at chest. any time. 
Um, all right. So extra we, Donovan chest because we don't have enough of that. In the show, yeah, right? that's true. Well, not yet. Um, so we get it's, uh, it's coming around. Um, yeah. Oh, I got. I do like to point out this. The synopsis that I'm reading uh, does name the visitor who shoots um, faux Mike Donovan, and, and they like Jake shoots him. I love that they just point out. Like, Jake, Jake is actually the is actually visitor captain. Do, He's is never that called now? Jake, so I never call him that. But that's the same character. That is his. Oh, uh, really? Okay, yeah, because I was like, character. when it said Jake, I'm like, oh, I thought, I thought, uh, what's his face, dude, shot him, and then there, and this is Mark the, or, or Brad the final got battle to script Jake? names him Jake, even yeah. though no one ever says that name. Um, Just like uh, Barbara Drop In is named Lorraine, no one ever right, says that name that. either. Yeah. But yeah. she's, a, I mean, we haven't really even seen her hardly, but she is around for some really important stuff at the end of the thing so she's she's important i mm-hmm. think they just should have left her barbara uh okay, i keep calling so, mark brad like i refuse to let go of the idea that these characters are the same because well now are. there's this but jake there's fifth column yeah. i'm just so confused no, i know there's jake there's is a terrible name for a visitor that's why i don't <laughs> accept it because um, willie is ideal willie's not bad the but whole... that's even that is not his name his mm-hmm. name is william that's true Yep. All right. it's, it's um, harmony that names him Willie and humanizes him. Yeah, how dare she? Um, well, no, I don't. <laughs> she's in love. What are you going to do? She's in love. She's in love with that lizard tongue. She's um, in love. Lizard man of mine. <laughs> There's a great scene. It happens a few minutes later, but we'll just do it now. So harmony. Have, uh, harmony says, it's, "I didn't really fall in love with you for your looks anyway." Oh. And he goes, "Oh yes, I am not what you would consider an ox." ox. <laughs> And she's oh, like, Willie, "Fox, you dumb head!" A fox, oh, ha, no. fox, oh, Willie. Yes, you know, <laughs> give me your fort tongue. It's of it's love. so interesting. Okay, I'm so gonna Harmony's say that again. So Harmony's done a little soul searching, and she decides it doesn't matter. Yeah, he's a lizard, but so what? Uh, that's, but he's a good guy. Yeah, he is a good guy, isn't he? I don't he's know if only we should. Trying to yeah. eat us and steal all of our natural mm-hmm. resources. But he, anyway, he, Willie, anyway. Willie. Willie He's a rather weak guy, but now that he's with the good guys, he's with the good guys. So well, he's, he's had a he's done a sort of an about face too. Not he's by like, choice. Yeah, now that he's well, you know, initially they well, were performing not all by these... choice at first, but eventually he either goes along with us or he doesn't. Well, th- this is worth noting because when I played V as a kid, which we've discussed, mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. always referenced Willie as a fifth columnist, even though he's technically not. He isn't. Right? Yeah. But we always yeah. called him that. So you're right. He is a good guy there. Anyway. He is a he's spirit. He's resistance. He, 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 he's yeah. resistance. He turns to the to the side of the, the righteous. Yep. He gets credit um, for that, but it, we don't really well, see he, that. That happens off also, screen. But. He also, you know, uh, and this he's also is, handy to have around. Well, yeah, he, mm-hmm. he, you know, once they, yes, they were doing tests on him, but then I think he probably realized, oh, they don't actually want to kill me or hurt me. I'm just. I'm now that they've taken all those chains off of yeah, me. Yeah, now that yeah, yeah now that my and half of them gone. still want to kill me. But also, they also realize that he might be vital for um for Robin Maxwell's uh, uh, <sighs> delicate condition. He seems and to have so, some knowledge about that that we yep, don't have. Yep. So that going you know, so forward, anytime Robin Maxwell is mentioned, this is going to be the response. <sighs> That's it. Um, all right. So. Um, we get uh, real real quick though. We swing around. We see that Maggie. We have we we check in on Maggie yeah, yeah. and uh, Maggie uh, Maggie's sacrifice of um, of uh, uh, becoming intimate, continuing her intimate relationship with with, with young uh, Sir Bernstein. Daniel, yeah. Yep. Ugh. Um. And Deuce. Daniel. Daniel just still. Uh. Yeah. Just. Um, no, we mentioned in the last episode he's off he's off the edge there's well there's he's no the one that him. he's the one by the way that captures diana or that captures julie at the end of the episode we didn't all really right so that. she moves up he, the ranks he, quick he, he jumps out in front of that van because they pretty much escaped and he just keeps shooting at it until it stops and until it almost shoots, hits uh, him. Kills, and he face? comes whipping around the corner and holds his gun on uh sorry and holds his gun mm-hmm. on um julie and yeah. diana comes rushing up and she gives uh-huh. him the 
I'm going to have to monitor your progress, oh, young I man. Or keep my eye on you. Uh -huh. You've gotten us quite a prize. Well, Diana, yeah. we're all watching David Packer. And and Julie gets a super awesome dig at Daniel too. I don't remember exactly what she says, but it's like, yeah, what's yeah, good for you for selling out your own people to a bunch of what did she call them? Lizards or no? Yeah. Yes, but it, she uses a different term that's Iguanas? really really strong and derogatory. Iguanas? I, like no. I don't know what it is. Uh, night crawlers. Yeah. That's what night it is. Night crawlers. Yeah. She night gets punched crawler. in the face for saying that, but it's yeah, an awesome does. line. Um, all right. So we, we check in on Maggie. Maggie <laughs> night so. crawlers. That's awesome. <laughs> Juliet, um, she's awesome. And, uh, and yet she'll never be the same because of her horrible, torturous experience in the Thank you for Maggie bringing that up again. Great. Maggie is doing great uh, getting information between. Um, She's getting everything. Yeah, between, yeah, she is. Um, so all yeah, Daniel she, wants to do is talk about all the shit that he does and how yeah. awesome he is. And she yeah. just, she, all she does is go, oh, yeah, honey, that's awesome. And he just keeps. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Well, it's, it's it, I think it's this right in this scene where she's like, oh, prisoner. Uh, that's yeah. kind of boring. I you thought know? it was going to be something cool. Yeah, exciting. Yeah. So um, good. Maggie is aces. She's yep, really, so really we, good. Um, good so, spy work. Uh, so the the whole fake uh, Mike Donovan, one of the things that, whether this was its initial plan or one of the byproducts of this, is Martin is able to suggest, you know, I think we should probably bring all of our high-level prisoners down to our headquarters on Since Earth. clearly this Since Mike this Donovan lookalike guy, yeah, Mike, yeah. they can't keep them here. This is the um, dumbest idea ever, and Martin sells it to Diana Absolutely. at a perfect time yep and well, because she's flustered i know mm -hmm. it's perfect it's really really great yeah she's very flustered and that's when we get pamela going to to uh to to steven, steven. is she is she always like this oh my god uh, frankly yes <laughs> we need to support her <laughs> I mean, oh my god it's so underhanded yeah. and wonderful um, and their delivery well, you just know we're best yeah. buds now and we're going to bring this bitch down. It's really, really an awesome scene. It is. And all, yeah. yet all they do is exchange polite lizard pleasantries with each other. Polite night crawler pleasantries. <laughs> it's a truly so, awesome scene. I agree. Sarah Douglas and Andrew Prine, hats uh, off to them. They really make that scene well, they, they it's that, it's that wonderful cock of the head, maybe a little eyebrow lift. Oh, we should support yeah. her. And yeah. Martin's again martin so we think we better do this like he just kind of does it like blah, 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 mm -hmm. so that she can think it's her idea and she's like do it that's, that's what that's okay yes and this is worth pointing out that this this is what's continued this is one of the things that is continued over from the original yeah. like all of these little things to manipulate diana yeah. is just it's fascinating as powerful and as trigger happy as she is she's so easy you know, mm -hmm. but that's what's so and, interesting about and, her. Cause and Pamela's later, we'll just mention it now. Sorry, Joel, I don't mean yeah. to jump all over on you. You're I know good. you're trying to hold the thing together. Um, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> oh, that, that ship sailed. But, long ago. <laughs> that yes. that Pam, ship Pamela's sailed little long moment ago. with John where she convinces John to let her take over in LA. Oh, yeah. Is, is equally great. And John's just like, I just... Uh, I can't stand this constant Politics. bickering. bickering. <laughs> but yeah, like, they, they, they demote her to... They demote Diana to science officer duties only. No more military. And not only that, but they do it. It's the same as with her and Stephen. They do it under this guise is that they're helping her. They're helping Just her, let yeah. me deal with the military situation. And Diana will continue with the scientific mission. The great work oh, she's she doing. Has a great work, yeah. Excel. The great work she's doing, right, where she has always shown excellence <sighs> in the past. And John's like, really yes, that good. sounds good. But everybody will be happy. All of this is such a wonderful build to what we know is going to happen, and yeah, then it does. It's awesome. It's like it's like uh, even though he's a digital character in it, that's frustrating. The the whole Moff Tarkin power play in Rogue One, where he just he just plays everybody by just standing there, like he doesn't even do anything, mm -hmm. and yet he just it all works out for him in the end. Yeah. I I really adore that sort of thing, and it's. Yep. You need this level of visitor characters for this to work. When you when you break it down to just the three that are in the series, you're left with this Kerrigan family dynasty sort of love yeah. triangle drama that is tedious and terrible. Yeah. yeah. But when you've got Martin and Steven and Brian and even and all these all, people yeah. sort of, you know what I mean, tugging well, there's, and pulling. There's, there's room to maneuver. Yeah. And they're all 
they're the worst versions of us as humans. They're these lizard versions of us, lizard brain Might versions. they be termed as night crawlers? Well, it's not a bad term. <laughs> uh, but I use the term, and I've said this throughout, they're cold-blooded characters, like yeah. figuratively and literally. And yeah. that's that's what Kenneth established. And even though it is certainly more soap opera-y and a little cheesier in Final Battle, it's still very, very enjoyable when these exchanges Agreed. happen. Agreed. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, 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 yeah, so we get uh, so thanks to Maggie because of course Daniel is like one of the heads of security at the headquarters, and now she's able to get the information that hey, they're bringing the they're bringing some high priority prisoners down, and who might is, Julie be there? Might Julie be one of those high profile prisoners? Um, yes. So this is their opportunity, and of course, long story short, yes, and we should mention you're moving on which you should do but we should mention briefly this this one of these many little spats that brad and maggie who are involved have yes, where yes. he's he is not coping well with the fact that she's off sleeping with some other guy his, his is this ego the, just can't kind of uh, is this the that. scene on the little caboose thing yeah it is yep and they're that's arguing where we get that and she's first... like what are you you calling me a whore and he goes well that it's not the word I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is there's two things about this scene. This is, I think, where we get that first terrible love sax crap music. Is it? But no, that's when yeah. they make up later. But yes, that mm -hmm. happens with these well, two. But, but I but here. I also think this was always odd to me. Well, not always, but this this happens viewing, right before we go on our let's rescue Julie. Mission. Right, but I'm saying this this relationship between Bark and Maggie. Mm -hmm. It feels um, stuck into me. A little. Like, these people little... aren't people we know. We knew mm -hmm. Bark previously, sort of. We Vaguely. never knew Maggie. Yep. Right. So the fact that we suddenly are really following their relationship, I understand. And that, we've, that we didn't see their relationship begin or right. develop. We only and this see is, so it this where is, it's starting to it break feels, down. It feels clunky to me. It's not that I don't it's enjoy very, the performers, no, but it's right. like. No, this, you're absolutely we're focusing right. on it's completely, this. It's completely shoehorned. In. It is all why? shoehorned into this one episode. To, to right, but why aren't we middle and end? If we're going to focus on an outside love relationship, why aren't we looking at Ham and Chris? I mean, that's what I'd want to know. <laughs> How is their relationship <laughs> suffering? Well, yeah. Chris gets to be a part of this scene. He's the one that rides to the rescue. Oh my God! Maggie Chris tries is so to walk good. out of the out of the oh, yeah. out of the room and, and yeah. There's Grabs real the animosity between Mark. Oh, first I love of all, that moment. Because he was sort of humiliated when he was on century duty. So his relate. So there is, even though you're right, shoehorned is exactly right. I won't argue with that. And at the same time, here it is. Let's deal with it. Yeah. yeah it's, um, it's, it 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 is clever how Mark's relationships with Elias with with uh, with um, Sancho, you know, how those really are established in every little way that the series is able to do it. Yeah. You see Mark and Maggie partnered up as dressed up like visitors in the rooftop rescue at the hospital. So you you can see there's they're connecting those characters in every way they can, even though right. it's not perfect. Um, he grabs onto her and is like, we're not done talking with this. And <laughs> Mickey oh, Chris. Get, he gets in their way and he's like, He's like, hey, why don't you uh, take Let a break or whatever? <laughs> he's, yeah. he's like, why don't you just shut up or something stupid? Some, you know, because mm -hmm. Brad's really irritating in this scene. Sorry, he is. I love him, but he's really but the annoying. actor's really hot. Doesn't that count for something? It does. No, uh, uh, I guess a little. It does. And he and what is what is Mickey? What does Chris Farber say to him? He says, "You got any question that I couldn't uh, bring your life to a pause right now? Yeah. Maybe end it all together." Yeah. And he just look, and he d doesn't break eye contact with mm -hmm. him. But and, it's, that's and the Brad great. Does the whole mm, and he kind of wiggles free yeah. and pouts. And but that's the great out. thing. All these little moments you get from from. from and then he has Chris. this tender moment with Magni. He goes, he goes. I think your I think your friend needs to grow up. <laughs> yes, yes. But right. like we do not have anything more than these tiny little moments with Chris. But you love him. Yeah, you love him. He, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, he never wastes an I mean, there's this a little way down the road. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come yes. on, he's brilliant. Yeah, yes, he, he is. really is super terrific. He's a fantastic um, screen presence. <laughs> but this is one of his cool moments with Maggie. Because even when he says that, you know, I think your friend needs to grow up. He's not He's not even being a jerk about it. He's no. really not judging them at all. He, What he's saying is... This is for you the... Know, yeah. well, I'm, you have my support. I understand what yeah. you're doing. This is ugly. 
you know, it's all in But I, yeah, I support you and I, yeah, it's a terrible position he you're in. He doesn't get but, it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he can't, but I get it. Yeah. Let's, what it's worth. let's talk about real quick the budding romance that we, um, we see between Ham and Ruby. Oh, uh, no, it's not a romance, but I mean, it is this lovely little scene where, you know, because uh, Ruby is, is an outstanding scene. Oh, my God. Um, Ruby where she's is putting getting on ready. her makeup and getting ready yeah. to go to work on on rescue day. And he is, brings yep. he brings her uh, a, a wrench and he explains that if she hits somebody on the base of the skull with the yeah. wrench, they'll go down. It's not pretty, but it does the job mm -hmm. is his term. And and she's <laughs> like, well, OK. And she has this. She has this little, like, she loves this attention. She enjoys being mm -hmm. a spy. It, there's joy in her. And this little exchange with him is like that. And she's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Just like the, the nurse and Romeo and Juliet. And Tyler has this line. And you can tell he, Ironside's great. He pauses for just a second. He doesn't take a big pregnant pause or anything. But he pauses for just a second. Like, should I say this to her or not? Do I am I want do I want to make a connection with some person? I don't know if I want mm -hmm. to do that. And yet he says it anyway. He says, you know, I saw I can't remember the actress name, but he's I saw her do that in London yeah. back in whatever. And she stops and looks at him and she goes, Mr. Tyler, I you know, yeah. I, there's I think there may be more to you than you're letting on. Right. And he what does he say? He says this this is the line where it goes too far. I wish this wasn't in this because this scene is perfect otherwise. But he gives the whole, yeah, I'm retiring today and I'm going to go live <laughs> on my live forever boat or whatever. He says, yeah. he says, uh, uh, you know, we, let's get through this mission. And I'll, yeah, tell I'll tell you the story of my life, he says. Yeah, and, well, like, oh, yeah. and she I, says, I think that might be worth living for. Yep. Well, yeah. this, okay, I disagree, Ryan. I don't have any problem with that. If you don't, it, it is, if you've ever watched an episode of TV in your life and you don't know that Ruby is doomed after that conversation. I understand that. I'm, and it's, it is heavy handed in the fact that there's no question that we're not, that Ruby's not going to make it. We know that. But Maybe there, we know it anyway, this exchange, I mean, I was, I was really excited that we get to this scene because mm. I think this is one of my favorite scenes in the entire 10 hours. I agree. Like this is so brilliantly performed and written. It's so subtle and little. You get so much, you get so much, you get the first and I think only humanity out of ham. Not the only, that, but well, certainly the first. The, well, probably the most explicit right i mean like that's you know i i'm not sure we'll talk about other things yeah this i is, mean this is the first crack in the armor that you see though and that is significant but it's so and and the the fact that we will get a payoff a little bit you know is but i i found this scene just heartbreaking i was it so is. moved by this and not because you know what's going to happen but it's such a technically unnecessary moment for a sci-fi adventure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's some the exposition fact, in it, but yeah. But the fact that it's there, I think speaks to how strongly they believe that it would. Well, and just Ham how and, well, well Chris and, and Ham are being integrated into the story and into yeah. the relationships of our other characters. Like they've just been introduced to us to half an hour ago. And it's yep. like, here I they are. Scene. They're part of the love, thing. Love, it's love really, really scene. great. And you know, and, I was going to rip on, Pamela as being sort of a bad addition, but she she comes a long way in a really short amount of time as well, which is pretty yeah. cool. It's all you can really ask. Um, the um, the payoff of Ruby's story mm. also, I mean that that's part of why this scene is so wonderful. I mean, obviously, yes, I I completely agree with you, Ryan. That that you know that oh, you just gave her the kiss of death, dude. You know, by saying when we get back. Yeah. yeah, you know that might right. be, but um, story but, of my life, he says. Yeah, like, but then you know, but then you know, so so let's. I just real quickly the 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 attack on the headquarters. There's Julie. We do see Julie in a visitor's outfit. Ugh. She has, uh, you know, has she and been? She's, the life has been drained out yeah, of her, her out has, of her eyes. Again, this is a very simple thing. This is an actor basically doing nothing, where an actor has been doing all kinds of stuff before, and to see her just sort of this deer in a headlights maze. worthless yeah. person being led around is she's is, a shell yeah uh, and also it's not only not only um did they bring not only uh, uh, uh are the, is there bring it's important to note that the that of all of the that the high profile prisoners that they have totals one um julie's the only one 
Um, well, there could have been other transports. Yeah, yeah. It's just sure, final I battle. Guess, Let's but... make this as small as possible. Not one extra body on set, please. Yeah. Um, Not one extra bagel consumed in the morning. In, craft <laughs> in the craft service. Yeah. Yeah. It's just uh, cheap, but whatever. I, and frankly, the the uh, what are you gonna do? the rescue of Julie, that, that getting Julie, actually goes off pretty simple. For a pickup I mean, it, truck rescue, it's not half yeah, bad, it's I have not, to say. It's, and it, and it kind of, yeah, it goes and pretty that's, efficiently. That's, that's Chris and, and Ham and what they're bringing to these resistance guys. It's different than these random, crazy, head-on suicide missions they've been going on. This is very mm -hmm. tactful. It's very... You know what I mean? It's a very yeah. military like exercise. And of course we Ruby gets to use her wrench. She gets to knock out some guy. Yep. So Ruby Ruby plays an integral part. She has to uh take down a lady the shield grid, fencing. Or shield the fencing, shield yeah. fencing, yeah. Um and, and so, so in order to do that, she has to out. access an area that she's not supposed to be in. She's ended up in the basement. She bumps into you. She Woman. bumps into Daniel at one point, and he's like, Ooh. hey, wait a minute. Don't I know you? Remember, and they used to like, be neighbors. Yeah, they well, it's the thing is, like, is he Abraham really this dim, or is he just friends. high? Well, hmm? it, I also, is the makeup that good? Well, I that's mean, the thing. Yeah. But is, is he pretty good. I know, but is he really that dim? Well, it's context. It's one of those things. Like, it's like those. Things I don't recognize where you, you into, outside of I my neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. I, if I don't I see. Well, okay. There's yeah. the. Uh, this is a TV convention that we just have to live with. I get what you're saying, Michael. Once he kind of recognizes her, shouldn't he completely recognize her? Right. Yeah. That. 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 It shouldn't take A, B, C, D, E to your root. You know, your Ruby. Yeah. He should just I get do there. Know you. Yeah. But. Um, and let's, but unless he yeah, gets there, he and gets it, there, it's and it's drawn out for maximum suspense. So. And we, you know, we get this great. Um, You're not wrong though. It's, it's so yeah. So Daniel um, discovers. I get why it is the way it is. Uh, yeah. Ruby, um, as uh. Ruby has, Ruby has done everything, and she does the old. She tries the old Christine, uh, the old Christine defense of I just I I'm lost. I, this place yeah. is so big. No, no, yeah. no, 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 Daniel. This is yeah. This is Bernstein's. This, this is, is David Packer's. Packer's. Yeah. Packer's Other than a couple so... of great moments that he had as an actual person in the original miniseries and final battle, in my opinion, this scene where he's I do know you. I know you. You're and that. You're that woman. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be here. And he pulls his gun out on her, and yeah. she she gives this. You're. She takes her couple of her prosthesis is out and she's like she's like that you're that i've known you your whole life you're that little boy who you know that used to come over and i used to give candy to and it's this this it's just because it, yeah. you know she's doomed and it's this gut she, yeah thing. and she, she appeals to is, his better nature yeah. which he I know, know, know he no longer has and she says you, you're gonna shoot me and just kill mm -hmm. me in cold blood no i can't i cannot believe it and she turns around to walk away and starts up these spiral stairs and he literally executes her. He shoots her in the back and this poor old woman rolls back down the stairs to his feet. Mm -hmm. I, I also want to... It's just what's, limp and dead and it's just... it's One of the things that's so terrific about this is uh, uh, Daniel doesn't kill her because she's part of the resistance he doesn't kill her because she just shut down the security grid she doesn't kill he he kills her because he feels disrespected how dare you think you you can do that get away what? with us you, think you could do this to me, me? yeah and, and that's why it, it, it that's and it, it, it's it's a it's wonderful it is this wonderful little it is it, it you know because again it reemphasizes that daniel really it's not about he believes in the visitors he believes that it's all good it's this right. is about my ascension to power and here is this your disrespect you were my neighbor and you come in under my nose mm -hmm. and do this no, this, that is that is that is more an unforgivable sin to Daniel than yeah, being part of this escape plan to to steal a high profile prisoner. This this scene, watching this recently, I mean, we all know I, I'm a I'm a softy and I cry at the drop of a hat. That is true. This was a gut punch, yeah. a gut punch, and it, is. it it's was telegraphed from the heavens. It but is, it but it's still is. the fact there's, but there's still, and there's still the happens. opportunity for the writers to let her live. There's still a possibility. They could set it up as a red herring be like, oh, well, she makes she a good case for why she should live and why he shouldn't kill her. She does turn her back on him. She's no threat to him. I mean, 
It's right. it's so rough. He, it is he so loses rough. nothing really. By and this is also go. this is also someone we've known from the beginning. Yep. And all the other people that have left us prior, um, you know, she's the longest mm-hmm. lasting one at this point, isn't she? I mean, she's pretty much. You know, there's that that, yeah, we, that we've there. known the from the beginning. That, the fact that she's the loss that the resistance suffers for rescuing Ooh, Julie, man, because Tyler is not pro rescue julie he thinks Correct. her no, mind she is thinks screwed. She's turned, you gotta yeah. move on without yeah, her we're done but he what tyler again this is one of his moments what even though he thinks he's right and he kind of is where where he concedes it is these people have been marching to this woman's beat all this time and if, the only way for me to gain their confidence is to do this thing for them yeah. and so he eventually gives in but at the loss of sort of the one of the person people he most admires in this group yeah right? and julie wow. ruby has been everything to julie since the yeah. resistance started and it's, she's going to be brought back and she's going to find out in a moment yeah. that it's, she's it's, gone but it's, and that's it's, what's but, you know that's what's fascinating and, that this you know we talk about the fluff of the final battle this is absolute not fluff and realizing we do get that that payoff but knowing seeing ruby die and knowing that julie's gonna have to get that news yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow yeah, and, and considering yeah. And, and you know you think back to uh ruby was the one who initially talked to julie and said yeah you're our your leader instincts. yeah you're you, you know yeah it's oh um, my god this just yeah. makes me hard and s- about this. look s- this even- section here is with respect to the big ending which okay but this section here is the very very best part of this episode this whole bit even with maggie with with daniel with, uh, the whole bit the, all the inner connections are paying off mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know and cross cut with all the visitor drama this is the best that this episode ever is yep. we're running out of time we have a huge ending to talk about so we need to get to saxophone yep so and we un- need to get to the pumping station and all that yep. crap so real so quick unfortunately after ruby's death we get a <laughs> And we come back from break, and I, I, I don't. Did they go back and get her body, or if it, is this more of just a symbolic pounding? I feel like it's symbolic. It's symbolic. Did, yeah. Um, and we. But we got uh, another great Chris Farber moment coming up. Yep, we get. What a, does he do? Well, they all so try to join. The funeral. Oh yeah, they we're trying to, right. try to join hands, and, and he's like, he's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we get so we're I'm at a little memorial. Oh, so uh, we, you know, Ham. You know, yeah, this pretty funny. so and it's who uh, is it? It's Brad's hand that he won't hold, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. Oh, I don't, I don't remember. remember. It's somebody like um, that. And uh, or maybe so it's get... just random visitor, random resistance guy. Yeah. I don't know, but it's it's super funny. Um, we f- so we find out. Uh, um, so we have this. Yeah, so we have a little memorial for Ruby. Um, and, and Ham comes at Julie. Yeah, he and Ham oh, yeah. is not happy. Ruby's that dead she's because back. of you, and I'm not taking orders from you. We don't know if we can trust you. Yeah, yeah you are. Yeah, and then we, uh, but Julie knows of this plan because of the her brief time as a uh, a um, high profile V convert. She knows that they are going to steal all of the water from Southern California in 30 days uh, with a direct pipeline to uh, one of the motherships. 30 days. Um, These days, you could do that in about 25 minutes there you go in a water um, in southern california so we uh so obviously this is the new plan we got to stop them from stealing all the water in southern california this um, is the MacGuffin with which the end of the episode is is all hung on cool. a lot of things come to fruition here but this is it's kind of a silly deal and um, M- M- mike and julie because mike says julie's going to come with me but they're like we need to go do some testing we need to go out to this site and there's this great scene where you hear this come out with your hands up blah blah you hear oh, the yeah. visitor voice and everybody freaks out and ham and chris come in and ham takes the little thing off his voice and he's like <laughs> he's like blah 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 you know these things make us sound like the visitors this is compliments of the global network or yeah, whatever. I was gonna say, and, this is, if you had any doubts, like I may have, uh, right. that the, that the global network was real, we now here's have- a, Here's some more evidence that we it, have. That it we is. have voice converters and we have experimental explosives. <laughs> right. Um, oh, right. And, what is he, and what does Julie say to him? Well, you sure like to make an entrance, don't you, yeah. Mr. Tyler? And he's like, well, I don't like having to repeat myself. Oh, God. Says. Another one of those great ham Tyler lines. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but he's not convinced, and it really. Now that we forgot at the end of his big shootout, his his big his big one liner is when he looks down at the all the 
corpses of the visitors. He's like, no, that's a waste of good luggage. That's a waste of good luggage. But you got to um, get this in, though. Badass. That's a waste of good luggage. Yeah, it's a waste of good luggage. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then uh, we have, uh, so. You're right. But so Tyler is coming at Julie. Uh, essentially, everyone. He's telling like, everybody, Listen. you can't trust her. You, uh, She's back. Mm -hmm. Who else do we have to lose before you realize she's a, her mind is yeah, gone. Her mind I mean, is, yeah. is cheese. It is done. Um, but everyone says, nope, we're standing by Julie. Julie has got us this far. We're sticking like, with her. Okay, gooder. I'll, I'm with you for now, yep. he says. Yep, for now. And then he says, okay, so somebody's got to go out and look at this pumping station to figure all this stuff out. And he's like, well, me and Julie will go. And he goes, there's a reconnaissance mission, not a picnic in the park. Oh, God, yeah. So awesome. and, and, yeah, and Mike and Julie both are not like, a picnic what? in the park. What? I, wait, what? How, We're how not dare together. You insinuate? No. We haven't touched Bump but Uglies at all. But Which this they is, haven't, but this know, is obviously. the problem here. This obviously, is where Tyler it started to. Right through that started to be kind of a problem for me. It's like, why would you send your high profile leaders, Mike Donovan, who is, is yeah. conceivably it's a TV show. That's the I know, reason. I know. But, but, you know, look at this. <laughs> Who's that? You have Wait. no idea. You have no idea who I am anymore. Ryan, where'd Joel go? Yeah, you have I no idea. I, who is I just see some random visitor. visitor. Yeah, I know. He even sounds like them. But yeah, it's I totally I, there's do. no reason for it. So there's no point in complaining about it. But you're I know, right. but it is, a, it is worthwhile complaining because it's everyone asinine. knows Mike Donovan at this point. Even and Julie, Julie at this point as well. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they're the um, exact two wrong people to send on this job. Uh, it's still funny. This is a reconnaissance <laughs> mission, not a picnic yep. in the park is a funny line. And when they pull up and convince with their new voices, convince the visitors that are there, you know, he he... Mike gives Julie this look like, are you okay? And she's like, I'm fine. You know, yeah. like, I'd stop <laughs> worrying about me. And he, and a great Mark Singer, he goes, sure sound funny. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yes. That's cute. It is, <laughs> yep. it is it very is. cute. Yes. Um, it is cute. Right. Well, so, we got to uh, cover a bunch of cute before we can get to knocking boots, am I yeah, right? Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, we, this is the courtship. The courtship yes. of Donna. Let's see, what would Julie and Donna and Mike Donovan be called? Uh, uh, Julevin. That would be their celebrity nickname. <laughs> Julevin. Um, Julie. Do yeah, I know. And uh, so we Bully? get the, the, the experimental, but uh, and we got to con. Uh, so they go do their reconnaissance thing. At this point, we also get Maggie and Bark. Um, that are uh, they they reconcile they you know he's like yeah I was kind of a jerk all in the course like, of yeah, forty minutes were. they're breaking you, up they're getting yeah. back together you kind of were but you know what would you want to be my wife I'm gonna yeah. put a ring on it and she's like oh of course Bark I will uh, marry and you. Ham's quite, like let's it's go not quite as stupid as that but yeah. it is kind of as stupid but it does yeah. have the music um, to match it yeah it it has terrible music uh, it, which is only gonna get worse. Dennis Indeed. McCarthy. Um, I don't even know if Dennis McCarthy is responsible for this particular piece of music. Oh, this feels like public domain or not public domain, but this feels like the kind of music you buy from a music scoring service, literally. And it's used three times throughout. And it's the same cue, different parts of the same cue every time. And it's this, it's this stupid early eighties. I mean, this, I tend to like this kind of music, but this, saxophone i mean people call it porn music but that's not really fair because porn music for the most part didn't have a budget for this kind of music but it's corny it's this corny love music that is mm -hmm. terrible and whoever's responsible for it the decision to put it there it's awful and it undermines the scene and the way that Absolutely. the scene between simpson and denise gaelic is played about as good as you can play it their their reconciliation his 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 true, I, I understand what's important. I know I'm not dealing with it, but I really do know what's important and you are everything to me is what he's trying to say. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I wanna prove it to you. So, uh, you know, will you marry me or whatever? Yeah, and then Ham tells him, let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, so we get, um, uh, sorry, real quick. So again, this is like the Ruby yeah. Tyler scene, though. One of it's these kiss people, of death. Yeah, we can't these... really be sure who, but we could yeah. guess. One of these people is effed because of this scene just happened. Because we don't need people coming together and being happy together. 
We just mm -hmm. need that like we need a hole in the head. The, it's, the TV's all about drama. So once everything's worked out and whatever thin conflict is established between folks, it's time for a more radical change in that situation. That's, mm -hmm. that's just the rules of this type of drama. So keep your he eyes out for what goes down. By the way, I hope you like each other because you're partners or whatever he mm -hmm. says. It's kind of this type of music. I was trying to get to the saxophone here. It, it, it doesn't matter because that what you're playing yeah. there is 10 times as subtle as that, what is yeah. actually in there. That's true. <laughs> I, even um, if it's the same kind of music, that mm -hmm. cue is the opposite of subtle. It is obnoxious. Oh, it is. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, the attack on the um, on the water uh, facility, the plant, uh, which the uses a very famous industrial interior that is used on I don't know uh -huh. tons and tons of shows. Yep. With with the, I, I see it all the time. I still see it with the ladder going down the side of the wall, the big long but staircase. How, this is what again kills me. It's like there is no subtlety i'll use your term or way to hide walking down that thing on the very yeah. outside well, just some of them are wall. right that's right it goes back to that whole idea of it's a really how cool little set anyone and actually they're using looks up. every piece of it but they're doing it at the expense of any sort of realism i totally I agree, agree. Right. Yeah. Um, um but this is a fun sequence we got oh, different yeah. people paired up with other people lots of little wise cracky comments uh, some well, the minor suspense physical with the, combat, the mm -hmm. nitroglycerin, whatever. Yeah, yeah they have have to, to, they've got this very. Uh, you got to keep it at seventy-one degrees, or it'll explode. Right, or it'll explode. It's this yeah, experimental yeah. nitroglycerin. But that, there's the great part where I think it's yeah. Ham and Chris, and he's like, "What is it at?" He's like, 71 72. degrees." Seventy-two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, so we get the so uh, yeah, and and of course there's uh, also this uh, incredibly powerful security grid that right. uh, a laser which that turns means, off turn, only for a certain time of day. So yeah, there's this, this is whole pretty cool. ticking time bomb. It, yeah, yeah, there's a whole yeah, it's kind of a, a, a an oceans lizard thirteen sort of scenario. Well, that we have see to go the through. example. All of these of things what yeah, happens yeah, if you yeah. get in there. Yeah, right. um, yeah. If so you're there's a whole this, bunch of things that have to happen. Only way in only way out corridor at the mm -hmm. wrong time you get it's like a flash get, gordon disintegration you get disintegrated yep, yep. yep. and so uh, uh but everything pretty much that goes. was just some poor random kid yep. wandered yeah. onto the site yep. by mistake how would he know that by the way mm -hmm. and how did the security cameras have multi-camera setups with i know they shut up i already asked that question it's too sorry, late doesn't matter wonderful. i'm sorry yeah. i'm sorry and oh, um geez. and they had uh uh, so we also have, um, so it goes off pretty well, uh, a, 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 again, um, and they are able to set the explosive. The flawed success. That's what the novelization yeah. calls it. A it absolutely is a flawed success. The novelization is after your own heart. It skips this whole sequence. It, at the beginning of a chapter, it gives you a recap, a quick two paragraph yep. recap of what happened. Uh, it just the says only... the assault on the blah, blah was a flawed success. This happened and this happened. Now yep. on with the story. It's, and now we, wow. but uh, unfortunately, what does happen is Bark gets shot. Bark yeah, and is this, there, again, there was this no power cool, here. And it's as, as cool as it is inevitable, but it's, it's, just, it's not set There's up no properly. There's no power. Takes one. Yep. But, uh, There's but no Bark reason is like, for him to stay behind. Yep. No, he is no. not wounded badly enough that he couldn't escape. Nope. Uh, he doesn't really help anybody else escape from what we see. Like all of that could just be done if they just shot it right and did it right. But they don't do any of it but right I, for some weird reason. Mm -hmm. The cool but moment in this moment is other than Denise really plays the kicking and screaming, you got to drag me away from my lover thing pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, the other moment is this between Tyler and and, and Bark where he, he kind of looks at him and he's like, all right, you, you earned my respect a little bit. I still think you're yep. a douche, but here's a clip for you. Absolutely. Here's kind of a pat on the back and I'm off. Absolutely. It is that sort of, you're kind of a douche, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, this is, this goes but, a long way, buddy. This but, goes a long but, way. But, the, but this the, is cool. The thing I about it though is sacrifice. like we had, we got less of Ruby mm -hmm. to lead up to her death than we did for Bark mm -hmm. as a chunk. Yeah. Yes. I felt nothing here, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sure. I, I it's, understand. It's, you know, and so that's that's a problem. This is supposed to be, you've set it up, you've really tried, 
yep. and it didn't work. I'm like, I don't right. care. That's <laughs> because real, everything real, about this setup for this and the execution of this doesn't work anywhere. I mean, I'm not going to see this let actor's me, blue eyes anymore. This, That's um, a problem. But uh, other than me, that, who cares? The, yeah. my, my plot synopsis here, uh, as it was written, I don't know who wrote this, but... Uh, um, Sandy Simpson plays is getting shot deaf pretty cool, too, where, um, where he really plays the hit of the laser and his hand kind of goes limp mm -hmm. and all you see is his hand slide out of frame down that mm -hmm. little staircase he's on it's um i do like it says uh mark is wounded and sacrifices life to cover the escape something that maggie would grieve over <laughs> <laughs> that's about the approach yep. to the material i have to mm -hmm. say wow uh so yeah. real quick we get a special bulletin <laughs> a special bulletin of diana and steven going i, I don't know that we got this kid Anyone know who this kid is? He Anyone? wandered into one of our places and, by mistake. Know, and look, oh. we're we're so nice. His name rhymes with Sean Donovan. Yep. It rhymes with Bron and, and the sickening Bonovan. thing about this, we found Sean. Ellen, this was this didn't happen because of Christine. It yep. didn't happen because of Mike. It happened because yep. Eleanor, Eleanor said yep. I would, I, to Stephen, I would very much like you to find my grandson. Mm -hmm. He's been detained aboard one of your ships. Oh my God. You know, she does that. Like, I know what it <sighs> is, but because it's for me, you'll do this. And of course, Steven is like, I'll definitely see what I can do. And then they turn around and. Uh, and just, yeah, so we have a. Like, she just. She just, you, they just use him as a tool to capture Mike. It's yep. yeah. really great. We get the exchange. We get the exchange of uh, Sean and. Um, uh, shot at the and, bat cave by the yeah, way at the bat cave uh, and with uh, so Donovan becomes gives himself up to be a prisoner um, and did we uh, skip the shot. cake I want more cake scene <laughs> no that's later that's later okay um, that's right that's you're right so Sean, uh, Hammond, yeah, Ham and Julie. That's rude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ham and Julie uh, go on to uh, it's um, funny how decorum is so important to people who are serving absolute and total evil that they still hang on to that and they'll yeah. interrupt your talking about trying to save humanity to tell you that that wasn't really the proper way to do that. This is neither <laughs> the time nor the place. Eleanor is so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, she's a piece of work. What man. a lost cause she is. Um, so we get, uh, so Sean is taken away by Ham and Julie uh, brought back to. Um, brought yeah, they do. an. Ex you guys tried to say this. I skipped over it. They do an exchange in a tunnel or good guys on one side of the tunnel, bad guys on the other. It's a great but, scene. Yeah, it's well set up and everything. Uh, Tyler's, you know, you know. His people are all over there watching. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Tyler's, uh, you know, I didn't want it to end this way. Gooder is pretty cool little moment. Yeah. And Julie, too, is rather distraught over this. Um, but There's um, something intriguing to me about watching the visitors in this kind of deserty area that seeing their uniforms and seeing and there was something interesting about that struck me as like that's really cool looking. that's because you know they wanted to just tear off the skin and let their lizard scales it's get true. the sunlight oh it's true steven and martin look pretty strapping in their gold trim uniforms in yep. the yeah. final battle i have to say um all right so uh again another further uh ham um ham and his associate uh chris um <laughs> Are uh, that you know the the resistance we'll is have to change now. hideouts again. Yeah, we got to change hideouts. Yeah, I know a place. And uh, so they move. They're now in a prison, a um, jailhouse, a jailhouse. Actually, but yeah. Yes, and um, an old city jail. Uh, that's yep. where they're at. Uh, and Willie is helping out now. Willie is helping Robin because uh, with uh, getting ready to go into labor, which is yep. um, always yeah, exciting. Just do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is do oh, this. This will oh, make yeah. your convulsion stop. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In, oh, yeah. Oh, that's. And Julie's thing. like, well, "All right, you're on board. You're nursemaid number one, yep. Yep. Really. Um, And uh, so, okay, so but up on the ship with Mike now. Um, the fifth column shows up. Uh, and got, again, you uh, you're always ripping on Robin and always praising Blair Tefkin and Blair is <laughs> like that's oh, yeah. really it. it why that works is because you just want to reach into the TV and do whatever you can to make that stop. Yes. Yep. There's yes. something about it that's really not, unpleasant. Please, please it keeps that going. Anymore. It just keeps going because yeah, Willie takes forever to be like, uh, right. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yep. It's, um, it's, so we have, it's, awesome. uh, it's coming. It's coming. So baby. up on the, up on the ship, uh, uh, fifth column shows up in Mike's cell going, Dude, you cannot give Oliver. up your secrets. Yeah, this Oliver guy, for like, whatever reason, gets a name. It's a good does. little performance by it. And uncredited he's like, you gotta, you gotta take this uh, suicide pill here, dude. We're not, we're not in the, 
yeah because he kind of like donovan's like do do what you need to do i i'm gonna talk you know mm-hmm. and oliver's like well we don't assassinate people you it has to yeah. be your decision here's a little yep. cyanide pill. a visitor cyanide pill and then um, as soon as we meet oliver because and donovan even does the because they do this little Casablanca, you know, I hear the weather on the mothership is such and such. Yeah. Not in times of whatever, you know, I don't yep. know what they say to each other, but yeah. some some sort of dumb spy Coded. introduction yeah. that Martin developed. And, you know, Singer stands up, yep. takes his hand and goes, it's good to have a friend. You know, I'd love that. Yeah. And, I love uh, that. So, as, but before it's terrible, he can, but it is awesome at the same time. But before time. he can take the suicide pill, Diana jumps in, and and uh, Diana Jake, and Jake slash Jake, visitor captain, visitor show captain up and, Jake goes and, and takes out Oliver and crushes the pill so he can't. And then Diana immediately goes, "I have this incredibly powerful truth serum." Because oh, you know scary. that I do, and get some you know, right in the jugular. Yeah, Martin's it. like they're not going to bother with converting you, dude. They're just going to yeah. shoot you with this stuff that'll probably kill you, and it will make you tell the truth. Yep, and and He's Martin is holding him down. Effective. Martin is holding him down while Diana and they're like, and she's like, "Who is the fifth column? Who's it? Who do you know?" And he's like, "What is it you always say, Michael? I was thinking, or I I had I an find idea. it interesting, Michael. I find it interesting." That Donovan, when he gets shot with this shit in his neck, is able to lie at the beginning. And instead of just pretending to lie about everything, he makes a joke about his hair being blue. Why didn't he say brown and then lie when it was important? I just, I find that interesting, Michael. It took, it took a minute for it to get full effect. That's what I, I honestly took it as that. That is probably true. She shoots him again. I mean, it's like Novocaine. Novocaine yeah. takes yeah. a while to work on me too. But that, when I saw that as a kid, all I thought, if you know how to, if you- if, You can if lie, this why wouldn't you lie? You, why would you lie fast. and make them shoot you with it again? I think, yeah. what, I think what's great about this scene is that there, they, it doesn't waste time. It, it's blue. Okay, who's your fifth column contact? Uh, Martin. Uh, well, and Ash Moore's reaction, like they're all kind of looking at each other. It's really very tense. Yeah. And he looks at him, he's like, Martin. Martin. Like you just yeah. like the words oh, don't want to come out. It's great because it doesn't, anyway. it's a it's kind of that pull off and the Martin, band-aid what fast. What does he do? Does he try and hide under the desk? No. He springs into action. The gun is out in his hand, he's shooting yeah, at her. He is, yeah. And it's yeah. the only time we see Martin miss anybody in V. Uh, Every time he pulls true. that gun out to shoot somebody, they get shot. He's the he's awesome. And they and stay he shot. He misses her as she's running away, mm. of course. And now they uh, got to get out of Dodge, man. So they are, yeah. So well, they're. I, I'm sorry. We one more thing before we move ahead. We missed yeah. the consummation of Julie and uh, Donovan's relationship. Yeah. And the only time we see Mark Singer completely. Well, they have that the scene show. where they're all mourning for Brad, and and they, he she says, you know, they were going to get married, and he's like, wow, I, that's crazy. And she goes, I can't believe making plans like that at a time like this. And Mike says, I don't know. I mean, that's you live for the things that you live for, even in the worst of times. I mean, that's what makes us people, or whatever. Yeah. And this this conversation culminates in this really corny terrible thing it's more of that terrible music but he's shirtless but it's important for them to consummate for something that happens later it is so right. anyway going back to martin's they're, they're unveiling. Relations for real they clearly they, got they, together um, and yeah, made yeah. Love digging at, it. after this sequence yeah they're digging so they're, back to martin back to and, martin. Digging on each and other it's and even and more substantive than that because she has sort of a breakdown uh, with him she doesn't have ruby anymore well she, she doesn't, doesn't know, know who she is she can't trust herself she's using her incorrect hand constantly yep. and it's it, every time it happens it freaks her out yep. and he's kind of like it's okay i'm here for you baby and i'm being cheesy about that and he's a little cheesy about it but good right that's just mm-hmm. what i need somebody i can count on you know so and of course, need i mention that singer shirtless yeah, I, I, is he? Isn't one? Isn't um, he just in a bath towel? In fact, in no, he's in his. Jeans. No, he's in his he's jeans. In his jeans. Yeah. He's got a towel around his neck, but he's I in think his so. jeans with a shirt on. Um. So. Uh. So of I course, there was a towel involved. Don't ask me how, but. <laughs> um. So of course, uh, now this episode ends with what us wondering is: Are Martin and uh, Donovan going to be able to escape the mother ship? And it goes to black and fades out. Spoiler alert. Yes, they are going to be able to escape. But wait, that is not the end. What? 
that is not the end of the episode. Well, surely Martin and that's the end. Big no, cliffhanger. Big cliffhangers. Are they going to be able to get? No, it is not. Because suddenly, oh, Julie, it's happening. Willie. I want it Willie. gone. I want it gone. Yeah, with that We're baby. well beyond that. Oh, man. This baby is about to be gone from Robin's Boom. birthing canal. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, birth, the, so the, we first, you know, going along and it's very scary. And birth, the baby, oh, no, look, it's a beautiful baby. Oh, it is a it's beautiful a girl. baby girl. Oh, and, and Robin's and, like, really? What does it look like? What yeah, is it? Yeah, show it to she's me. like, it's yeah. a beautiful baby girl. And can I see it? Yeah, can I see it? Yeah, well, I got to wipe the goo. Let me get some This is a good intense birthing scene, yep. actually, leading up to this. And then it's the payoff is with this baby coming out. And she holds this sort of normal looking newborn up mm -hmm. to her. But And then all it? of a sudden, lizard tongue ah, yeah, comes out. And oh, that's all scary. And, oh, my God. And of course, Robin, that. Ah, take it away. Take it away. Take, take it, it away, away. Take it away. And of course, that's how the episode ends. That is the cliffhanger going in into episode a baby oh, with a lizard tongue what or is it is nope. it nope all of the sudden um julie julie v? that's v for victory right that you're only no. up oh One, this is two two there's another baby julie julie no. there's another baby this oh my god this sound effect <laughs> That thing's sound yeah. effect is really eerie. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, a, a really primitive hand puppet, really. But it's pretty it's, good, though. And it's very effective. Yeah. You remember I said I want the applause sign? I want mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah. I'm lizard sure baby. that thing's rotted away by now, but man, how cool would I can, to have There that? is a way for you to get your own lizard baby. I could explain <laughs> it to you in detail. Look at that. Uh, yeah, so lizard. Uh, I, to so, this day, I still tell people whenever they say I've had a baby, I'm like, was it a lizard baby? <laughs> and then if they say no, I say, oh, well, congratulations. And yeah. if they say yes, of course, I say, oh, I'm very the, sorry to hear that. Since we're talking mm -hmm. about this, did we miss any important, because I don't think we talked about Robin more than once for this entire episode leading up to this. Well, Rob, Basically, there's she not much the with Robin. She's okay. panicking. Robin. She's we didn't panicking miss anything. with Julie. This whole, the whole pumping station, she disappears for that whole sequence okay. deliberately. So that when she starts having convulsions and we leading into the birth at the end of the episode, granted, uh, Joel's uh, guy with the preview of tonight's episode, you know, lets it out that this is coming and everybody kind of knows. But the movie still does a very, it, it does two things that are very clever. If they're not perfect and they're a little cheesy, but they're both very clever and they work. One is they ignore her for the entire second act of the episode. And then she appears when she's really important. Mm -hmm. Second, the two babies. I mean, this becomes a thematic thing, but that first baby coming out, oh. it being kind of normal, it not being normal because it has a lizard tongue, which is freaky. Mm -hmm. And a, it and it looks really angry when its tongue comes out. <laughs> yeah, that, it that puppet is very effective as well. Yep. Um, and you're thinking, oh my God, what is that? And then there's the second one, and everybody in America watching this. Yeah, you know. Oh no, this it, was like water cooler talk another for one. elementary this kids. Is the one. The this day. is the monster. We know it's going to be that. Mm -hmm. And even though we're looking at kind of how cheesy it looks a little, it oh, it's, it's climbing its way yeah. out of her. Like the whole thing is shot in this very old school monster movie horror sort of way, but in a way that absolutely works on all of our subconsciouses. I can only imagine how a person who was able to have children and give birth reacted to this scene. You know, that's more than half the population that watched the show and they had to be totally freaking out. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. And it, it, it's effective, man. I mean, it, well, it, yep. there's no chance if you've gotten this far into the V saga that you're not going to be back next week to see how it plays oh, out. Oh, hell yeah. But I, the thing that strikes me watching this this last time is, you know, as a kid, wow. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. A lizard baby. Like, this <laughs> is the coolest thing for a little nerdy sci fi horror kid. Like, this was the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. But watching it this most recent time, it just, it's that culmination of having seen Brian seduce Robin, Diana watching this experiment, all this stuff, because this has been one, two, now three episodes in the coming 
yeah. for this and to see this finally happen and to kind of witness the absolute, this is just foul. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the, the deeper lizard implications. Babies love too. Yeah, and what well, well, baby lizard baby and that's has interesting that we'll talk about the next yeah lizard episode. baby has blue eyes Mwah. yes you do but it's uh, it's my, but the, it's the fact there's something again I like using the term tongue. is that's Full primal house. about this it's so Traits disturbing and upsetting this yeah. is crazy and to it have needed seen to be it. disturbing and upsetting and it needed to deliver on a very cheesy B movie monster moment and yet it needed to work. And it does. It's all those things. It's it really still does work. works. It still yeah. works. Works like gangbusters. Yeah. Uh, my apologies to the audio listener. Um, I did. I was putting up a picture. Or I mean, a, a of the baby of the baby of the lizard baby and that, lizard baby uh, in the background. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that next week. But that's also one of the more heart wrenching moments of this. Whole yeah. Saga. We, yeah. We're gonna. So yeah. So that that does it for night two. That finally yeah, there, is the, how night we two go. ends. Like all final battle episodes, ends with a freeze frame. It ends with a freeze frame on Lizard Baby. Of yeah, of Lizard Baby. With um, a particular sound effect, Joel, maybe or. Indeed. <laughs> Um, all right. So, oh, gang, man. that is, that brings us. That is the conclusion of the penultimate episode of V, the final battle. Um, and and I'll just say, this is the time to say it. I know you want to wrap up. I do too. I'm going to be thrilled if we get this episode under two hours. Um, but I'll, from a structural standpoint, if this had been on every, you know, twice a year, we do two uh, two night mini series of v like kenneth johnson had intended this structurally is where the second series would have ended and as it is structurally that really would have been amazing and wonderful oh yeah to have to, to wait a full year for two years well for that, that that and just the fact that this is it this is the height of it we that nothing that comes after this is as cool or as astounding as this this is the this is you got there's a lot of payoff coming because there's been a lot of stuff set up but none of it is as yes wah, lizard baby none of mm -hmm. it's top top of the world oh my god you know th th to me this is the iconic moment in the whole series so it would have been a very very powerful cliffhanger to end on very very quickly does pamela's fate come out on this episode or is nope. this the next, next week okay. next all next one after another after another after another but Man. you're going to have to tune in next week, listeners and viewers, to see us, to, 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 to talk about the, the same um, scene seven times in a row, just yeah. with one different actor per scene. It's awesome. Correct. <laughs> um, all right, gang. And hot air balloons. And yep. really wonderful hot air balloon music. And, Stop it. And right. really awesome, like... Y'all, let's not do the show the now. End of World War One. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about real quick is uh, when they did blow up the uh, the water facility. How the movie suddenly turned into earthquake. Yeah. Uh, and the stock footage that they stole from earthquake. But it's not even oh, earth, was... It's not even earthquake. Totally, a couple of the shots are. Yeah. Because there's a big dam that blows up an earthquake, but a couple of those. It's some, the one where the water is coming down near the bridge with the old Depression era vehicles on it. I know. That isn't even but earthquake. This is I don't one know of the other. That's from. This is one of the other things that struck me watching and the that dam music explode is terrible too. and seeing homes and cars and everything destroyed. Was there a consideration for your fellow humans that are just living nope. their lives trying to make it through? Was that nope. considered or? Nope. No. Okay. And, yeah, it's, it's for the it's, greater good. It's a know? win, Michael. It's a win. Woohoo! So did cheap it. and dumb. I hate. Yep. I hate it. I mean, oh. I like the pumping station sequence because to me, that's you're doing your best. It's TV action scene time. I get it. But the the stock footage, all the use of the disaster footage from other projects, that's unforgivable. And the fact that all of that destruction is underscored by the happiest, cheesiest yeah. end of a Growing Pains episode music possible. It, yep. it just makes me sick. I apologize for bringing that up at the end of the show. So I'll let me just put this Sorry, guy back. Yay, lizard, Yay. lizard Yay. baby. Lizard baby's back, everybody. How yeah, you doing, okay. Gooder? Um, all right. So that is going to do it for us for this week on the movie show with Joel and Ryan and Michael. You know, Woo. I got to put, I got to have uh, this back up here. Um, for the end of the show um yeah that's gonna do it for us this week um and uh, we hope that you will join us for this extended month almost yeah month plus one recap <laughs> of it. 
of the V saga. Um, we're so happy. I hope you're happy uh, and hope you're enjoying us talking about it because frankly, I think we're loving it. I don't want to put words in these guys' mouth, but this is, yeah. uh, this is pretty darn fun. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much. And we will see you all next week. Thank you for listening to The Movie Show with Joel and Ryan. Remember, all views and opinions represented in this podcast are personal and belong solely to the speaker and do not represent those people, institutions, or organizations that the speaker may or may not be associated with, unless explicitly stated. None of these views and opinions were intended to malign or deceive. And now, here's the producers, circa 1982, to play us out. <laughs>